relax. No way. Hey, look, I guess I'm never gonna get used to this, okay? Come I never gets to you. I grew up around here. Nothing out there that scares me anymore. Hey, look, I mean, I still live near here. And look at me. I think I learned to be cool after a year, right? Hey, Dylan, do you ever think that maybe you're in the wrong kind of work? You really dig this, don't you? You can believe it. I guess it's because I read too many comic books when I was a kid, but I like helping people, doing good. You know something, Dillard? Every time we make a bust, I feel warm all over. Before you go around in the back, you two, you follow us. and then book them. Ash tried to use this, Captain. I caught him stashing these in the toilet tank. Our information was that there were supposed to be three. Well, two's all I found. The former could have been wrong, or maybe there's another one stashed someplace else. Well, I'll go look for it. Hold it. Rossi, open your jacket. What? Open it. Officer Vincent Rossi, after considering all the information before us and hearing your testimony as well as that of the witnesses, we have found you guilty as charged. You are hereby relieved of duty 
and dismissed from the police department. Any claim for back pension or back pay will be forfeited. Furthermore, you are to be advised that your case has been turned over to the district attorney's office for possible criminal prosecution. Off the record, let me add that after your short but very promising career, we're all, to put it mildly, very disappointed in you. Sorry about that, sir. Hey, babe, you're going to have to think a lot quicker than that if you're going to be riding with me. <laughs> Vincent Russell, you are the lowest. That's what I hear. Hey, all that talk about helping people, doing some good, that wasn't nothing but a bunch of jive. Hey, man, I believed you. Well, you always were easy to con, Dillard. under arrest. I'm what? Hey, no, Captain, I started it. Nobody's blaming you, Dillard. This guy is a disgrace to the whole department. I don't have to listen to this garbage anymore. Stop him! The DA just issued on you. You're under arrest for illegal possession of narcotics. You're a joke, McCardle. Take him out of here! Book him upstairs! Out! <laughs> Right here, Rossi. Inside. <laughs> they finally got wise to you, Rossi. Who's that? Gantz? You still here? I figured you would have posted a bond by now. Going out this morning. My lawyer told me all about you. How you been ripping stuff off for yourself, selling it back out in the streets? Yeah, well, he's lying. I was framed. <laughs> Isn't that what you're saying? I was. I don't know Nash had that stuff stashed in his house. It ain't gonna play, Gans. They got the word on you. They know you were passing a big package. You walk right into it, baby. What word? What word? Who tipped them? Man, you're stupid. If you had any second, you wouldn't have been dealing with Nash in the first place. Didn't you know he was using the stuff himself? Nash? Was it one of his boys? <laughs> they got you nailed tight on this one. And with your record, you'll probably go away for the rest of your life. Rossi, you're gonna tell me what you know! Are you kidding? Why should I help a loser like you? I've got my own problem. I'm gonna be your biggest problem if you don't start talking. All right, let's go, Gans. You're going home. We're looking for you, Rossi. Move it! Night. My cat's missing. You seen him? Yeah, you've been gone, so I've been taking care of him. Been feeding him, too. Huh? Give me a cigarette. You like that cat? You want to keep him? No, nah, man. It cost me a bill for the cat food and two more for my time. Anyone been looking for me? For the whole five. It's for the cat, Jesse. White dude. Real big sucker. No hair. Kind of mean looking. Hey, Vince, you ain't a cop no more? No. All right, man. 
Come by with your cat later. You're stupid. Now I'm gonna have to change your face for you. No, please. I order just for messing up my day. You're lucky nothing broke. I would have charged you for it. What are you doing around here anyway? If you had any brains, you would have split out a long time ago. Told you. Wanted to talk. Talk? You call this talking? You're in trouble, buddy. Real trouble. When your case comes up, you're facing 20, maybe 30. And your boss has got to be plenty worried, figuring you might talk in return for a deal. But if I start to run, I got the cops after me. Then my people start to feel they can't trust me. I'm bleeding for you, really, man. Oh, Dorsey. Dorsey, I only got one chance. I got to stay here and beat the rap. If I could get to who tipped, find out the case they got against me. What do the cops have? Come on. You were with them. You know. You're asking me for a favor, Gans. No favors. Inside information like that's gonna cost you. How much? Enough bread to get me off the hook with my lawyer, make a new start for myself. How much? For you and your friends to beat the rap, ten big ones. Ten. You way out of line. Goodbye, Gans. I'll... I'll get back to you. Here. And that stays in your pocket or I'll take it away from you again and next time I'll use it on you. Get rid of it. That's a girl. Huh. I'll be right back, honey. I'm going to take a little bite right How's it going, Vince? Okay. Captain, couldn't we tell Dillard? We've been partners for over a year. He took it pretty hard. He won't die from it. But too many people know about this, and you might. Even people in our own department. What if I get into a tight spot and I can't reach you? You call Night Watch Commander Bishop or the Chief. Three of us ought to be enough. Out of the whole department? Oh, terrific. Once we make this case, that's it. You'll be back in uniform. How's the story going down in your neighborhood? Are they buying it? Well, they figure I turned out as bad as my brother Frank. You just keep selling the fact that you're a cop that went sour. If anyone can get into Ambrose's organization, it's you, Vince. Yeah, well, I think Gans bought it. Paid me a little visit this morning. I laid on him how I'd be able to help. Good. But don't come on too eager. I don't want to blow the one good shot we may ever get at Ambrose. We can nail him if we can find out what he's doing with all that cash, how he's washing it. I'll do my best. Uh, I think I'd better get back. My, uh, family's going to be wondering. Oh, sure. Don't spoil your day off. I promised your mother I'd keep an eye on you. Huh? Too bad she's not around to see what a terrific job you've done. First, you talked me into joining the force, then you turned me into a cop who's gone sour. Great. Cheer up, Vince. It is a beautiful day. Captain, don't you ever see anything but the bright side of things? 
and a setup. I thought about that, but, but what's his angle? Me. The whole operation. Bert, you haven't given him anything, have you? I didn't tell him anything, and he didn't ask besides. I went to him. So for 10000 he's going to give you everything the cops know about us. Dave, I need it. I really do. Bert, Bert, you're sweating in your pants already. Take a semi away for good. Once a cop, always a cop. The answer's no. Dave, he isn't like that. He had a brother, Frank, he used to run with the Keneally's got iced about three years ago. He's Frank Rossi's kid brother? Yeah, he even looks like him. Frankie was an okay guy, remember? All right. But I'll talk to him myself. Thanks, Dave. You just sit still until you hear from me. Jimmy? Sorry I'm late, Papa. I had some business. Oh, that's all right. Lane was explaining the new industrial park deal to me. Looks good. Did you tell him about the funding? I was just getting to that. My company comes up with the 20% needed to start. We loan him the money, and, uh... And the rest we borrow through your loan company. It means seven million channeled into a legitimate outlet. The money gets washed, and everybody's happy. <laughs> How do you make sure the county planning commission gives you the bid. They're conducting a study now to pick the site. The land commissioner in charge of it is a guy named Arthur Peabody. We got Mr. Peabody in our pocket. Good. You found us a good partner, Dave. I want to thank you for including me in, Mr. Ambrose. You know how to play ball? You end up rich. What about Bert Gans? Have you cleared it up yet? No. Bert's facing a tough rap. That's why I don't like dope. The law comes down too hard. Have you got a way for Gans to beat it, Dave? I don't know yet. Maybe he'll talk, huh? Make a deal to save his own skin. Yeah, Papa, maybe. Then don't gamble. I learned a long time ago, winners only bet on sure things. There's only one way to be sure of Bert Gans. Better take care of it, Dave. All right. Good. Come, walk with me. Oh, uh, let me know when the deal is set. I'll lay in the cash. It'll be set in a few days. Good. You have a nice place, Lane. Enjoy it in good health. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Sheila? Hello, Jimmy. Dan? Who are those men with Dave? Business associates. All these new faces, I'll never keep them straight. Oh, now, don't worry about it, sweetheart. They're just business. Things sure have changed. I get back from school and there's a new house, new friends. Oh, you're not knocking success, are you? No, not as long as it makes you happy. Well, I think I'll try out the pool. Neighborhood's gone to the dogs. But so's the whole world. So, now you're not even a cop anymore, huh, Vincent? At least that was a profession. With a pension. Yeah. Nah, you're not interested in pensions. I know why you're here, Vincent. You're looking to make a contact. But the big boys, they don't come in here anymore. Just the punks. Something I never figured. You, a punk? Gus, I can get a glass of this anywhere. Forget I said a word, Vincent. After all, who am I to tell somebody else how to live? Don't I cater to anyone who's got the price of a drink?
Someone wants to see you outside. Outside. You better go let the man, Vincent. Whatever you say, Gus. Frankie. Is that right? He was a good boy. He'd have done all right if he hadn't crossed the wrong people. You know who hit him? I just heard rumors. I don't repeat rumors. They're unreliable. Yeah. Well, what do you want to see me about? Try and burn Gans. Gans? You friend of his? He says... For 10,000, you can give him the answers to all his problems. Guaranteed. You and I both know he doesn't stand a chance. So what are you doing, Connor? He needs all the help he can get. I thought so. You're bluffing. That's between me and Gans. Look, I'd say you were a smart boy, except that you were a cop. Cop who got caught in a dumb ripple. Yeah, hey, I was on my way out anyway. If I uh, could have scored, I would have left rich. As it turns out, it cost me everything I had to pay. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I know. I might have something for you. What? It'll mean good money if you're my man. How much is good? Jimmy. I'll let you know. Yeah. Look, like I said the other night, I want to know what and how much. Okay, but what for? All right, where? Yeah, half an hour. be waiting for you there. Who'll be waiting? You said you had the answer to Bert's problem. I got a better answer. Solve it for him once and for all. Wait a minute, I'm not a... Do it, Rossi, and you're my man. I think he's coming. But he agreed to pay the loot you wanted to get me out of this mess. Gans, listen to me. There's only one way out for you. 
Go to the DA, give him what he wants. Make a deal. What? Ambrose wouldn't pay for that kind of advice. What is this? You don't have a choice anymore. It's a setup. Will you put away the gun and listen to reason? Yes, it is a setup. He got you up here to set the up for you. Gads, I'm trying to talk some sense to you. To me. I'm warning you. I'm trying to help you. Look, save yourself. Go to the DA. They'll give you protection. Dave was right. They're still a cop. Any closer and I'll shoot. You kill me and Ambrose will send somebody else. Your only chance is to make a deal. Either way, I got no chance. All right. What do I do? Let me call him. I'll tell him you're ready to talk. Man, you did a nice job. Think so? Are you kidding? The papers have it as a suicide. It couldn't be better. Come here, say hello to Lane Fielding. Vince Rossi. Yeah, yeah, Dave's telling quite a lot about you. Look, the little job you had to do this afternoon couldn't be helped. He was a loser. You just did him a favor. You know, Rossi, with your background, you could be an invaluable aid to us. Look, let's get something straight. I'm not a mechanic. Who said you were? We're talking about other things. Easy things for a man like you. Yeah, just uh, keep yourself available. That's it? That's it. From now on, you're working for us. Is that your car? I think you've got me blocked. I was just leaving. I don't think we've met before. Are you one of Dad's new architects? Uh, uh, uh no, I'm a, I'm a consultant. Sheila Fielding. Vincent Rossi. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know, but I've been away so long. It's like being a stranger in your own house. Well, I just started with it yesterday. Oh, on the new project? Well, I'm not sure yet. Well, maybe you can tell me about it. Daddy's so secretive. Must be something pretty big. 
Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to ask him. Oh. Well, be loyal. See you around? Sure. If you feel like taking a swim, help yourself. The pool's wonderful. Thanks. I might do that. Bring the wife and kids. What if I don't have either? Well, then I'd say you'd be welcome anytime. Now, uh, you tell Goldstein that fire trap of his isn't worth a penny more. In fact, ask him. Just ask him, what if it burned down? Then what would it be worth? I'll try it, but he's a tough old bird. And hey, what about Peabody? He's been ducking me lately. Well, I told him you wanted to talk to him. He's got me worried, Lane. All right, go call him now. I want to talk to him. Nothing wrong? up Jimmy last night. They're talking to him about Gans. Oh, Jimmy had nothing to do with it. Why worry? I thought it was all over. That's why. It's feeling. Hey, buddy. Hello, out there. You're a hard man to get a hold of. No, I haven't been trying to avoid you, Lane. It's just that Doris hasn't been well, and I've been so busy. Yeah, well, maybe what Doris needs is a change of climate. Say, like the desert. You got to think about taking her there when you get that report in. By the way, that uh, should be ready by now, should it? It takes time. Time for what? Lane, I can't just make my recommendation out of hand without considering some other possibilities first. Other possibilities? Arthur, maybe we ought to have lunch, talk this over, huh? I, I can't today. Say 12.30 at the fire. Be there, Arthur. Tell me the truth. You thought I was some wild-eyed predatory female, and I scared you a little. Scared me? Sure, it took you a long time to get around to calling. You ever think I might have been busy? Yep. But then I thought he's probably living with some gorgeous skinny creature who's on the cover of all those fashion oh, magazines. Oh, you found out. If you were, you wouldn't be here. Well, she had to go to town for a couple of weeks. I got bored. Good. Then you can take me to dinner tonight. You should wait until you're asked. You see? I spoiled it again. Yes, you did. Well, forget what I said. But I am free tonight, just in case you're interested. Sorry, I'm busy. Oh! Hey, oh, wait, be careful. Vance! What? Hi, Daddy. I've been calling your place all morning. What's up? Come on, get dressed. We have an appointment in half an hour. Lunch at the bar. Wait for me there. Hello, Arthur. Two, please. As if our site isn't feasible, you said yourself it's an ideal location. So what's the problem? I have a duty I've sworn to uphold. People are nothing but 
extortioners, blackmailers. I'm gonna let that pass. I know you've been under terrible pressure lately. Never should have knuckled under to you in the first place. You simply did us a favor in exchange for a loan. If I'd known who was behind it, I never would have borrowed that money. <laughs> you really think the courts would believe that? Look, why fight it out? It happens every day. Oh, now look at it this way. Doris's condition has put a huge financial drain on you. And putting in boys through college must cost you a fortune these days. I mean, it's not as if you're taking money to spend on yourself. Am I supposed to feel proud of what I've done? No, but it proves to me that you're man enough to do what's necessary to take care of your family. Nobody need know about the loan. As soon as you've sent in your report, the notes will be torn up, and you're off the hook. And what if my recommendation goes against you? Now, Arthur, don't force me to threaten you. You know that my people have spent a fortune buying our property where the site's going to be. If they even knew we were having this conversation, I'd guess what they might do to you. Maybe even your family. Hey, you gotta try this uh, homemade bread. I hear it's terrific. Dress, then you wouldn't have to come back for me. Don't tell me you've forgotten we're having dinner tonight. Then now shoot us some other time. Well, wait a minute. Nobody's forcing you. Why the sudden chill? Not now. You like scallopini better, huh? Enjoy, enjoy. Captain McCardle back yet? Yeah, I'll wait. Captain. Look, someone's here. I'll get back to you. Don't be mad. I found your address in my father's book. Terrific. My father made a little speech, didn't he? He's done it before. Kept me from seeing people I really wanted to see. Uh, look, Sheila, I was having a wonderful evening. Why are you picking on me? I thought you were somebody that Daddy couldn't push around. Maybe that's why I liked you. Yeah, but you don't know anything. If you want the truth, you scare me a little. I don't know what you're all about. Maybe that's why. It makes me want to know you more. Oh. Look, you're very pretty. And, uh, and you're very young, and, uh... You want me to go? If you... Look, you're a big girl now. You should be able to make up your own mind. I am. Uh...
hope this assignment isn't cramping your love life. Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, when you didn't call back last night, I started to get a little worried. About midnight, I was cruising your house and watched you saying goodnight to one of your girlfriends. That was Fielding's daughter, Sheila. Ah, uh, just strictly business, huh? Well, let's just say she doesn't know what's going on. Thought you might like to know what we found out about her father. Up until a little over a year ago, he was just a small-time builder and uh, land developer. Small-time? Not by the looks of his house. Well, let's just say he was a little underfunded. But he suddenly came into some very heavy financial backing. Got into some big projects through various subsidiary companies. The money man is Albert Ambrose. Billy makes a perfect front. He's clean, runs a legitimate business, and apparently he's willing to play ball. With all that mob cash being funneled into the building business. Dave Ambrose is working with Fielding, kind of uh, keeping an eye on things, huh? He's probably also supplying with all the muscle that Fielding needs for the deals he's trying to make. Yeah. Another name at you. Arthur Loomis Peabody. Am I supposed to know him? Well, Fielding had lunch with him yesterday. It looked important, like something heavy was going down. Well, I'd better check him out then. Rossi, I'm not through with you. That's a promise. Jimmy Terrell, one of Dave Ambrose's boys. He doesn't know you, does he? You asked me to pick him up, remember? I questioned him myself the other night. Well, with the purchase of Goldstein's parcel, we control the whole site area. Mr. Goldstein finally decided to sell. That's good. Yeah, he signed this morning from his hospital bed. Had a little accident. Some kids mugged him and knocked him down a flight of stairs. We're in a meeting, Jimmy. Sorry, I gotta talk to Dave. What's wrong? It's Rossi. I saw him downtown talking to the cop. So? It's possible he ran into an old buddy. No, it was McArdle. The cop that busted me the other night. I tried to hear what they said. Rossi spotted me, I think. Dave, you remember what I said when you told me about using this, Rossi? You left it up to me. If you made a mistake, you've got to make it right. I'll find him right now. This is Alice. She does all right. Inflation, pollution, revolution. Alice does all right. So you got yourself some new clothes, huh, Vincent? Must have hit it off with your new friends. The same one was in here earlier looking for you. Is that right? Well, he didn't hear nothing from me. After all, what do I know? I just assumed. He's taken such an interest. In yeah, I figured you must be in business together. Speak of the devil. I'll see you later. Rossi? Yeah. Come on, left, hey. please. Get your hands off me. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, get might... your hands off me. I'm going to come quietly. You tell my car to get off my back. Tell me. Stop. Ah! <laughs> 
One more. How to close it? There. You can hide my handiwork. How many times that I've been open like that? A few. Looks like it. Now your scars are going to have scars. Looks just like new. Mm. How does it feel? <laughs> There's nothing like having your brains jarred to make you feel alive. You put on a very good show for him, Vince. May well have saved your life. If they bought it. Vince, we're getting very close. We nailed down Mr. Peabody. He's a city land commissioner who's heading up a study for a proposed new industrial park. How's that tying with Fielding? Well, one of the sites that's under consideration is almost wholly controlled by Fielding and his subsidiary companies. That explains the zoning maps on Fielding's desk. That's got to be the scam. They got Peabody in their pockets. Well, that may be, but Peabody's got a very clean record. And he got a lot of good people that are vouching for him. Now, what would make him suddenly turn sour? Well, what if he didn't? I mean, what if they got a lock on him to force the decision they want? Yeah, but what is it? And we're running out of time. Now, if I could only get into Fielding's house and take a look. Vince, how are you doing with Fielding's daughter? Oh, come on, Captain. I told you, she doesn't know what's going down with her father. She's a nice kid. I don't want to... Vince, you've got to use whatever and whoever you can. What do you think about that? In the meantime, you're going to have to spend the night in a cell. I'll get you released in the morning. I said, couldn't you have uh, picked two smaller guys to bust me? You wanted to make it look good, remember? That's show business. Oh, boy, said that. Says you want to see me. When did you get out? This morning. Dirty. They had nothing to hold me out. They worked you over pretty good. Yeah, well, you had a ringside seat, didn't you? I saw it. What did the police want with you? Ricardo. He's had a burn on me ever since I got kicked out. Well, what's he after? He gets his kicks out of hassling me. He nailed me downtown yesterday and asked me about a bank job that went down Tuesday. Yeah, he's starting to get in the way, isn't he? I got my lawyer on. It'll be all right. Good. Well, all right. It's a nice operation you got here. Jimmy will take you back. Jimmy! What, you mean you got me down here just for this? I'll call you when we need you. That sounds logical. Maybe. You don't trust him anymore? Once you get the feeling, it's hard to shake. Well, he doesn't know anything. You always get rid of him. Or we could use him. Once more. Ah. Oh. Peabody. If he doesn't come through, we're gonna have to take care of him. Let Rossi do a job on him? He's the perfect patsy. Feels a lot worse than it looks, too. I just had a little wax. I've been calling you. Daddy's made plans to send me back to Europe tomorrow. Well, maybe that's best, just for a while, she. No, Vince, please. I am a big girl now, and I have made up my mind. Well, look, let's not talk about it here. Why don't you get changed and we'll go to my place, huh?
I should have figured you from the start. Yeah, well, it's a bad habit I got. It's like uh, shoplifting when you're a kid. Only one way to cure it. Come on. Explain it to you later, Sheila. Look, what are you doing? I'll tell you the whole story later, but just not now, please. expect you back so soon. Sheila, leave us alone. Look, it was my doing coming here. Where's Dave? Took off. His car's outside. Well, he borrowed mine. He has something wrong with his. Is that right, Sheila? He's lying. I asked him to come. It's my fault he's here. Don't go, Rossi. I want to talk to you. Sheila? Fielding, this is Sawhill. I'm out in the East Valley. East Valley? I thought you were going to go find Peabody. I did. He's looking at that site near here. Told me he made up his mind. That's the one he's going to pick. Is he out of his head? He seemed very adamant. I thought you should know right away. Turning in his report this afternoon. All right, going back to the office. I'll talk to you later. Trouble? Yeah. Peabody's crossed us. He's at the East Valley site. I gotta talk to him. Rossi, you're gonna come with us. Right now. You and your gun. You're not gonna wait for Dave? Uh, there's no time. Come on. All right, you drive. I was upstairs. Where's Rossi? I don't, I don't know. Did your father come back yet? Yeah. They went out again. Well, did they say where they were going? No. Hold it! No! You know where they went, don't you? No. Rossi is with them, isn't he? I don't know! Where'd they go? I don't know! Where did they go? The East Valley. The East Valley to find Peabody? Yes, I think so. We should have waited for Dave. And while we're waiting, what if Peabody blows the whistle? Thought you had him locked, so we won't. Yeah, I can't afford to take a chance. Ambrose is probably back. 
back of the house by now. I can call him, tell him to meet us there. All right, go ahead and try. Mobile, KG-6-2114. Well, operator, this is Mobile, KG-6-2114. What is this? Captain, someone on your private line. The guy wants to speak to him, Mr. Ambrose. Yeah? Dave, this is Vince Rossi. We're on our way to meet Peabody. Where is he, Vince? Yeah, the East Valley site. All right, we're on our way. Vince, try to get out of there before we arrive. I don't want one of my men shooting you if anything starts. Yeah, let me talk to him. I think he hung up. Dave? Did he say he was coming? Yeah, he'll be there. That do it, Mr. Peabody? It's fine, Wendell. You and your men can pack up now and head back. If you need us tomorrow, let me know. I think this does it. I'm ready to submit my findings. No use, Fielding. I've made up my mind. You're gonna pick this. Why? Number of reasons. Good reasons. I'm sure you didn't come all the way out here to listen to them. I came out here to try to talk some sense into you. Now, 100 years from now, who's gonna care where the industrial site was here or where we want it? I'll care. Starting right now. Have you thought about Doris and the boys? I haven't been thinking about anything else. They'll understand about the loan. Uh, what about the commission, the DA? You think they'll understand? Yes. When I tell him how you tried to blackmail me. Vance? Look, I told you before, I'm not a mechanic. Go on, do it! Right behind you.
Put your hands up. As far as anyone is concerned, I did this. You understand? Who's that? Rossi. Search him. Can you beat that? Rossi getting mixed up in this. Over here. I always said he was a bad apple. They tell me what happened. That Dave Ambrose was behind it, that you were involved, that my father... I just can't believe it. I don't think he ever meant for you to find out, Sheila. Are you all right? He's still my father. I'm going to help him any way I can. Sure. Why weren't you honest with me? <sighs> Look, Sheila, about us, I... It wouldn't work now. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Ah, oh, come on, no horsing around. Get down there. Come on. Here you go. Get it. <laughs> hey, uh, you two play together for a while. I'll be right back. Okay? Hello, Vince. You're a free man. Talked to the judge. He dismissed the charges on a technicality. DA get what he wanted? Oh, sure. Feeling's making a deal. He's giving us old man Ambrose and the whole organization in exchange for reduced charges. That's great. Hey, I thought you'd be happy. Everything worked out just right. When do I get back into uniform? Vince, I talked to the chief. The job you did for us really paid off. It really did. And uh, we'd like you to stay under. Oh. I knew it! I knew it! Vince, it's only for as long as you can take it. Look, I know it's rough. There are no, no medals. And only a few of us are gonna know just how important the job you're doing really is. But Vince, you'll know. <laughs> sure, thanks. <laughs> Will you do it? Sure, why not? It gets me out of inspection, doesn't it? Yeah. Go on, your family be wondering. at 8.30, the movie Suspense and the Thrills are here on 9 when we bring you the original and the best, Nightmare on Elm Street. It's Freddy Krueger at his meanest, starting his reign of terror. See him in action tonight, 8.30 on 9.